Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And he who can make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities. Biafra of the mind. Let's be frank to ourselves. It's a notorious fact that the government of President Muhammad Buhari has not been fair in giving a sense of belonging to the people of the southeastern part of Nigeria in his administration. Anyway, him say they don't vote for him. But if I may ask, has Nigeria ever been fair to anybody? Hence the reason Chidu Onuma titled his book, We Are All Biafra. But frankly, has President Buhari even be fair to anybody, including those that voted for him, or even those of his tribe, most of whom are suffering the general hardship of misgovernance, insecurity, and the problems of Nigeria today. With the exception of the headsmen using the president's ineptitude to wreak havoc on the rest of us, and a few who are privileged to share in the national cake, why parading themselves as leaders of thought in Nigeria. The rest of us are helpless. However, are these reasons strong enough to warrant us going our separate ways along ethnic groups rather than restructure the current entity? Is it enough to bring down the roof on the head of all of us? The answer to some of these questions and most I found in the book titled Made in Aba, an autobiography of distinguished Senator Eyinaya Baribe, the current minority leader of the Senate, a man I respected so much, or I respect so much, where he posited, I will try and paraphrase, Indigbo formed a large proportion of the market economy in the various states in Nigeria, starting from Lagos, Kano, Abuja, Port Harcourt, and even Meduguri, where there is war and crisis. The daily turnover of these markets run into trillions of naira. Igbos have been the single ethnic group that have molded the country together, given their commercial sojourn and way of life. For they say, if there is any town you travel to and there is no Igbo man, flee from that town. They, in fact, form 50% of Nigerians in the United States, if not more. So given all these advantages, one wonder why they want to allow themselves to be goaded into abandon abandoning their huge contributions to modern Nigeria and role in the bigger entity, rather than settle for a small landlocked enclave in the southeast. I see they find the answer to these questions bothering my mind. I beg if you get the answer, I beg reply me here. Funny enough, the manner in which the youth are prosecuting the agitation, rather than garner sympathy, has rather elicit hatred and disdain because of their refusal to respect the right of others to disagree with such idea. And you hear names like Fulani slaves, people from the zoo, ETC. Make with the calm down, Sha. If you leave Nigeria because of Buhari and his misgovernance, are you saying Buhari will rule forever? Remember, government comes and go. Tomorrow, it might be your turn. My advocacy today, therefore, would be, as recommended by the same Senator Abaribe, with patience, resilience, focus and cooperation with other ethnic groups, both minority and majority, Igbos can dominate leadership in Nigeria with their vast education and knowledge in commerce especially as the world is diversifying to a knowledge-based economy. Remember, at independence, 80% of permanent secretaries across ministries at the federal level were Igbos. The vice chancellors of major universities in Nigeria were Igbos. In 1963, the 1,033 Nigerians who were in the upper echelon of the administration of universities in America, only two were non-Igbos. All of these and many more can be achieved again if only they will pursue the path of restructuring and ensure a Biafra of the mind, which will enable them to play that role in a Nigeria that will emerge from the restructuring debate and initiative. For if the three major tribes in Nigeria complain of marginalization, within those of us will be minority inside minority. Go talk. Nigeria belongs to all of us. Let's stay in, settle our differences, and build a greater country. Thank you